Hello. I've just gone and got hold of a copy of What the Seychelles Said to Me. What the Seychelles Said to Me is an anthology by established serial writers and poets who wanted to start you on your writing journey. I've been asked a lot of questions about the title because people are sort of trying to figure out what the title actually means. Now, if you ever got hold of a seashell, pressed it close to your ear, you'll probably be able to hear its resonance, the humming noise that it makes in it. And I have interpreted that humming noise to be what poets have got to say. Poets are like seashells. If you listen intently to the resonance, you might decipher a lot of meaning from their words. And oh, I have been able to find some very introspective poets. Now, the landscape of Sierra Leone is littered with lots and lots of people on social media who claim to be poets. And if you're like myself, you've got to be savvy to weed out those who are actually talented and those who can actually represent our nation. And I've been able to find just those people. Whenever I get ginger beer from Tesco's, it never tastes the same as homemade ones. I don't know, it might even be ginger ale, not ginger beer. Now, when I launched this project about 10 months ago, I was faced with an uphill task. I wasn't going to use the word obstacle, but I would say it was like an obstacle because I live in England and my target audience live in Sierra Leone. And I wanted this project to celebrate the way our women write, particularly young females. You might ask me why. Because I remember when I was in Sierra Leone, when I was, was writing, when I started writing at the age of 18 or 19, there were almost no outlets. And I've told a story early on here of how my dad went to a newspaper editor and the very first time a poem of mine appeared in the newspaper, it was on a Sunday. And then in 1995, I was lucky that Lives in the Lion's Mane was published and I was one of the youngest poets in that book. Our young poets now in Sierra Leone have so many challenges when it comes to writing that you'll be surprised they're even writing. I wanted to look for females who might be able to relate to myself and who might have similar experiences like I encountered when I lived in Freetown. And also because we might write similar things. I don't want to be called a feminist. I'd rather be called a new feminist. I write about issues that make us female. And so because of that, we're vulnerable. It's very hard to find Sierra Leonean women that write about our vulnerability. It's very hard to find female poets in Sierra Leone to begin with. And I wonder why that is. I wonder why we haven't got as many female writers that I hear of when I sit here, when I browse the internet, or when I enter competitions. Why don't we hear about them? It's not that they're not talented. There must be something holding them back. And ladies and gentlemen, often our females are held back, are held back excuse me, due to our lack of avenues, a lack of outlets. I have often said that I know of only one state-run publisher. <laughs> now, if I'm wrong, please type under the um, video um, and correct me. You know, correct me as as, as this airs. I am only aware of Professor Malama Thomas's platform. I might be wrong. I haven't been in Sierra Leone. I haven't lived in Sierra Leone for about 31 years, as far as I know. Yeah. I know of SLWS, Serial Writer Series. That's what I say. That's, you know, I don't know whether they're other publishers. And I know some people also, like myself, 
self-publish on Amazon. But I don't hear a lot about Sierra Leonean poets where I live. Maybe you might say, well, you live in the countryside, you don't live in London. I was also trying to see whether I could connect with the under 25s because I wanted to see how they channel their creative writing ability into writing poetry and short stories. Predominantly on Facebook, I've been contacted by males. Don't read anything into that, ladies and gentlemen. And I can tell you why. It's because we have such a uh, um, dichotomy in Sierra Leone that men tend to be the ones that browse the internet. Young men tend to be able to be the ones that can afford smartphones. They might work. You know, our females might be at home doing house chores. So because men work, they might be able to purchase smartphones. So if you look at the statistics that Facebook gave, um, Facebook also gives me statistics when I go on adverts. Mainly the group, the social group of internet users in Sierra Leone live in Freetown. They're between the ages of 19 and 25 and they mostly come along on Facebook, the common line, to talk about politics, football and music. And then here comes this boring woman. She's going to talk to you about poetry. She's going to come and use big words. She's not even going to use clear words. You know, I don't often speak Creole, you know. So therefore, I thought, that's it. How am I going to get my audience interested <laughs> in what I do? Because at the end of the day, what I do is I celebrate Sierra Leone. We celebrate our literature. And there are lots of young people online on Facebook who have aliases. They have done Facebook pages. And they might not be who I was looking for. I was looking for someone who I felt right from a perspective that has been traditionally Sierra Leonean. Our Elvis Hallowell, of blessed memory, our Uma Faruksi says, our Ambrose Masakois, you know, our Silchini Kokos. I wanted someone that uses wit, sexy, you know, the probably has already has a, got a background in English literature. And it's very hard to find some people in Sierra Leone because poetry is now, has now been commercialised. Commercialised in the sense that people create TikTok videos for likes, they come on Facebook, they set up a Facebook page, they do it for followers. Poetry has lost its value. And so I wanted to celebrate the 14 poets today in our book who have some of, you know, been able to fill the gap. The gap is that they write poetry from mostly an academic perspective where you would find themes that are traditionally Sierra Leonean sort of like interpreted through new styles of poetry. We have a lot of young people who are veering into the area of Unmitted stanzas, shape poetry, prose poetry, which is of unheard of 